Let's get to this. I think this is the most important part of the night. Jonathan Glazer is the director uh, and, and now Oscar award winner for Zone of Interest. I have not seen Zone of Interest yet. I really, really want to watch it, but I understand it. I get it. I've seen Zone of Interest type movies at the very least a million times over, even though this movie in and of itself does not go the uh, the the played out cliche route of the Holocaust movies. Uh, Jonathan Glazer wrote a movie uh, or made a movie about uh, off a of book about the banality of evil and also the the interest that the self interest that people demonstrate even in in times of like intense cruelty. Tragedy Oscar bait is the normal trope, yes, but I think that it takes a a very interesting, very different look talking about the normalization of cruelty. Exactly, like how. Normal people operate next to f***ing Auschwitz, right? And I think that that is obviously a very important story and a very important framework, especially considering the parallels between what is going on in Gaza, right? The normalization of cruelty that comes with a fascist government. And we are there. We're there. This is like what's going on. And what's going on in Israel is a great parallel. And I would have been shocked, like I said, like I tweeted yesterday, I would have been shocked if he didn't actually bring that up. But he did. And for that, a lot of people are yelling at him. As a matter of fact, I said, Glazier made a, a movie about the banality of evil during the Holocaust. It would have been odd if he didn't mention the parallels to Gaza. Respect for saying something to an otherwise hostile room. Remember, they booed Michael Moore's speech for criticizing the Iraq war. John Jonathan Glazer calls for a ceasefire, highlights the importance of separating political conflicts from the shared humanity and suffering experienced by all involved parties. Jonathan Glazer's speech was blacklisted from the Oscars YouTube account, Lamau. Yes, there. here's the thing, okay? And it, look, 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 let's just hear what his speech is and then I'll go through it. Thank you to the Academy for this honor and to our partners, A24, Film 4 Access, and the Polish Film Institute, to the Auschwitz Birkenau State Museum for their trust and guidance, to my producers, actors, collaborators. All our choices were made to reflect and confront us in the present, not to say, look what they did then, rather look what we do now. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. It shaped all of our past and present. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. Whether the victims of October the... Whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel or the ongoing attack on Gaza, all the victims of this dehumanization, how do we resist? <laughs> Alexandra Bistron Kaladziejczyk, the girl who glows in the film as she did in life, chose to. I dedicate this to her memory and her resistance. Thank you. I mean, why is saying it on the stage so important to people that watch the sh sheep anyways? Dude, what are you talking about? First of all, that's like the majority of the planet. Everyone is a sheep. The entire point is waking up sheep. The people cheering and clapping aren't the Americas. Let me fail out. Yeah. So that was a, I think that was a massive deal. Okay. That was a massive deal. It's the biggest stage. His movie directly talks about it. He openly says using Judaism and the Holocaust in the name of like, contributing to atrocities that people face akin to like the similarities are there the mechanized uh, version of death upon that befalls upon a largely civilian population it is is a it's a perfect take it was a very brave thing for him to say and the reason why it's a very brave thing for him to say obviously like a lot of you are brain broken from hearing me constantly talk about this but there's a very big difference between me talking about this on my stream versus saying it at the at the oscars after winning as a Jewish man, winning a, a award for your movie that literally talked about the Holocaust, the fact that you're bringing that up there, he is the perfect person to talk about this, okay? The perfect person, the singular perfect person to talk about this on that stage was him. And he did it. He used the moment. I mean, it's just like he has literally all the backing and all the credibility. And guess what, dude? The ADL is big mad, of course. So many ultra Zionists are so unimaginably pained over this shit, okay there was uh what is that noah tishby lady was like i cannot believe how anti-jewish the hall uh, the hollywood liberals have become and it's like dude what the f are you saying you are the most delusional person on the planet dude uh times of israel accepting oscar glazer says don't use our jewishness and holocaust to justify gaza war director of award-winning the zone of interest holocaust movie laments occupation dehumanization in israel and gaza Several celeb wear pins calling for ceasefire. As widely predicted, Oppenheimer, the biopic of Jewish nuclear scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer, swept a number of categories of Sunday's Oscars, 
including Best Picture, in a year unusually heavy with Jewish nominees. But the most talked about Jewish moment of the night came courtesy of Jonathan Glazer, writer-director of the cerebral Holocaust drama. Dude, it's kind of funny. I just realized that, like, two dudes that were up for Best Male Actor were uh, <laughs> two Gentiles that were portraying themselves as Jewish men. I didn't even put that together. <laughs> That's crazy. You had Bradley Cooper and Killian Murphy. That's wild. Anyway, there was an end Jewish hate commercial during the Oscars too. Yeah, exactly. There was like a, there was a literal like uh, anti, uh, uh, anti-Semitism uh, ad and everything. Standing alongside producer James Wilson and Len uh, Blavatnik during his acceptance speech for the best international feature, Glazer, who is Jewish and came to Israel on a five-month program with a student at London Jewish Free School, denounced Israel's occupation of Palestinian territory, which he said had led to dehumanization that had affected both Israelis and Palestinians. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. It's all shaped all of our past and present. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation, which has led to conflict for so many innocent people, whether the victims of October 7th in Israel or the ongoing attack in Gaza. He added to the applause and cheers. This part is really important. He is directly pointing out the atrocities of October 7th and laying the blame in the hands of the Israeli occupation where it belongs. He is right to say this. This is the correct take. This is a take that would get you f blasted a couple months ago. This is a take that I've had since day f one that like the Harvard student coalitions had as well and got punished for it, like aggressively punished for it. Did you see all the lying monsters intentionally cutting the quote at we denounce our Jewishness? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know what they were saying, but Jonathan Glazer, you hijacked the Oscars for a naive, selfish, and vile narrative blaming the victim. Gaza was not occupied on October 7. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Glazer's reference to Israel's war in Gaza came out to pro passing protesters snarled Snarled traffic around the Dolby Theater as Oscars kicked off. In a previous acceptance speech last month, Wilson criticized innocent people being killed in Gaza as something people should face head on rather than from behind. The walls we construct in our lives, which we choose not to look behind, in an allusion to the film's depiction of Nazis and their families as willfully ignorant of the murder of Jews just beyond their gardens. So the entire point of like zone of interest is literally you can smell the crematoriums in Auschwitz. You can smell it. Some people know what it's about. Other people don't. But you should be curious as to what's going on and many people just know they know deep down inside they know they hear the screams that's the whole point right you should really correct this this is not at all what jonathan glazer said it's missing some key words right now we stand here uh, as men who refute their jewishness whether the victims of yeah what the f they misquoted them jesus christ this hard ben is so mad about it of course he is in jonathan glazer's zone of interest you don't see one jew those are the best jews according to glazer the faceless victim screaming in the distance ironically he's the villain picking up awards from the bodies of these anonymous dead Jews while ignoring the living ones getting slaughtered in Gaza envelope by genocidal murderers. Ben is the most Israel-coded American Jewish man I've ever seen. Like, down to the wire of like just the, the aggressive militant attitude like how did you develop this dog you grew up in los angeles he went to walter reed middle school in a jewish high school that's where he got it no but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this energy this energy is is straight up like a very right-wing israeli energy that ben should not have at all okay that's my point like this is like learned behavior you are surprised to learn that the world has more sympathy for the victims of a genocide of the palestinians rather than his perpetrators israelis i heard so i heard from many people you are the best the right has to offer but this tweet suggests you are an incomplete israel apologist i mean he is yes i'm a little confused what he means by refute his jewishness can you explain what he was saying a little yes he's saying we refute our jewishness and the holocaust being used by israel he's not saying he refutes his jewishness he's saying he refutes israel's utilization of judaism and the memory of the holocaust to do a genocide that's crazy dude i dedicate jonathan Gr uh, glazer's oscar to the brave and brilliant men and women of the idf and the state of israel don't stop till the enemy is defeated zionist undefeated and finding a new finding new unique <laughs> things to steal <laughs> Like, what do you mean? Nah, I don't care. I don't care what the movie's about. Nah, 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 nah. La, 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 la. I can't hear you. It's actually about, I've decided it's actually good. The movie is, 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 is not telling me what I think it's telling me. I will refuse to learn. It's my Oscar now. Uh, e Fartlow came out hot. I woke up this morning and felt unbelievable despair about Hollywood. For years, I felt it is a bad place. Okay, I'm doing her accent correctly because remember, she is Scottish, okay? She's Scottish. Eve 
Fart law is Scottish. I have witnessed Bars Han several times how this epicenter of popularity treats people with courage. Last night, it rewarded people with cowardice. <laughs> Jews who refute their identity were applauded on the Oscars podium. Non Jews who wore red pin badges celebrating Jewish lynchings in the name of peace were photographed having the night of their lives. Hours later at Vanity Fair, Mark Ruffalo said humanity is winning. No, Mark, humanity is not winning. Ego, money, and power is. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, that's that's what she sounds like. Look it up. Another, another banger from Eve Fartlow. Remember that former banger from Eve Fartlow where she said, just left a massage therapist, saw a free parking sign, thought that the sign said free Palestine. Us Jews are tired. <laughs> free parking. Jews are tired. <laughs> anyway, much respect to Jonathan Glazer. Like I said, what a fucking G. What an absolute G for openly coming out there and being like, listen, not in our name. This is bullshit. Okay, I have so much respect for a dude who was the most qualified to talk about this on stage. And now everybody's yelling at him. The ADL, which is a fraudulent institution at this point, ultimately in its inception, it was for a very good cause. Obviously, anti-Semitism is horrible and, and should be stopped. ADL is now apartheid defense league through and through. Okay, anyway, massive protests outside of where it was supposed to take place, which apparently caused some of the uh, glitz and uh, glamorous Hollywood stars to actually walk the streets in their outfits, in their little outfits, because there was, uh, you know, they, they shut down access to it. So let's took over multiple intersections in Hollywood, calling for a ceasefire in the Israel Hamas war, causing some stars to show up late to the 96th Academy Awards. At least one protester was arrested. The red carpet leading into the Dolby Theater was cordoned off for several blocks in every direction with a security checkpoint on Hollywood Boulevard. This is just such like police state, honestly, straight up. Big Oscar year for the whites. Dude, I'm sorry. It's a good year for movies and it was a good year for for the Oscars, stop, I don't, I hate that like, conservatives have now become the most annoying guys out there who they always were obviously, but now they're doing the exact same thing that like annoying liberals were doing, but this time from the conservative side. So it's doubly annoying because at least the liberals had like empathy and morality on their side. Conservatives are just as smarmy and just as annoying in their identity politics and it's also immoral. So shut the fuck up. They went from Oscars so white, Oscars so woke to like, Oscar's literally so white and it's awesome. Shut the f up. Just make movies, watch movies, enjoy movies. I'm sick and tired of this f nonsense. Anatomy of a fall cast wearing Palestine pins. Yes, everybody was wearing Palestine pins. They were wearing artists for ceasefire pins. Like there was a lot of, there was a lot of pro-Palestine messaging, which was genuinely shocking to me, I think. Because like, let's be real, dude. Oscars is like one of those institutions as ride or die, okay? Not for Israel in general. I'm talking like whatever the American State Department says goes. After all, these are institutions that literally work with the military, right? Like, and do a, a, a lot of promotion for the military. So seeing a lot of the actors beyond like the Mark Ruffalo's of the world who you expect to be like woke. It was cool. It, it, it was really interesting. It was cool. I think it speaks to how unimaginably cruel the situation is um, that like you have more people now demonstrating the bravery of taking on a position that is like anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian. I, I think a lot of people were afraid after October 7 to say anything for understandable reasons because, uh, you know, it was very brutal. It was violent. And it was uh, it was something that shocked people to the core. But wearing a ceasefire pin but not saying the actual word is the same equivalent as when celebrities were posting black squares on Instagram worthless. No, it is not the same. No, I don't think so at all. No, I think it's a pretty f solid statement. At this point, it's not even anti-Israel to say ceasefire. It's not. But pro-Israel people do regard it as anti-Israel because it's insane. Yeah, they're saying like Billie Eilish is a dude. I'm telling you, she's wearing an anti Semitic Hana supporting red button. She's a bigot. Like, that's what I mean. There's a lot of, there is a lot, a lot, a lot. 
Inside the theater, Al Pacino made everyone nervous with the way he casually mentioned Oppenheimer while announcing Best Picture. Here it comes. <laughs> and my eyes see Oppenheimer. Yes. The biopic about the father of the atomic bomb also won Best Actor, Best Cinematographer. Let me tell you something, okay? You know who I actually was shocked by? What I was expecting more from? Killian Murphy. When he said, oh, I'm Irish to the bone, I was like, oh my God, he's doing it. He's going to say free Palestine. And then he capped it off with shouts out to all the peacemakers around the world. We're living in a post Oppenheimer world. Shouts out to all the peacemakers around the world. I was like, come on, bro. Come on. You're literally Irish. Your existence on stage is like, this is the most pro-Palestinian country on the fucking planet in the Western Hemisphere. What are we talking about right now? When someone says, I'm, I, I'm Irish to the bone, I immediately assume, okay, you know, he, he's about to say some shit about Palestine. That's what I think. Do you think, and forgive me if I missed it, but I feel the Finns are more performative, especially, specifically in Billie Eilish's case, where she won, had a pin and a platform to say something she already has and was still silent. I'm not saying it's their job. But I don't know the pins really mean anything. I mean, it's the least. There's a reason why many people don't do it. Because it is like, it's still a statement. Hollywood is, and as we know, as I've covered extensively, allergic to any mention of like Palestine. Hollywood across the board is very reactionary towards uh, Palestinian struggle. Look at what happened to Melissa Barrera. They made an example out of her. Listen, I have experienced it myself personally from people who have literally been like, yeah, you got to dial it back big dog on the israel gaza stuff you know it's a little too hot for us you know I i've told you this yeah people get blacklisted and sh so i think it's a good thing overall i wish i do definitely wish that uh more people would speak out i wish everyone had like a like a zone of interest type speech ready to go locked in the chamber they gave one of the worst movies the most overt forms of propaganda best picture of the hurt locker exactly like hollywood isn't like pro-israel in the in the anti-semitic conspiracy way either by the way it's like pro-israel in the most like state department uh, propaganda ways possible there are certainly a lot of people who are hyper zionist like ultra zionist across the board and then there are woke kings like the guy heading the agency that i'm with who are liberal zionists killian's politics have been well known for many years to those who just learned his name because of oppenheimer i get it no that's why i said that's why i'm shocked because i because of his politics that's why i'm shocked that he didn't say anything and he went with the cowardly route by being like i'm irish <laughs> shouts out to the peacemakers <laughs> anyway